In the gloom of late 19th century England, whispers of a phantom killer echo through the narrow cobblestone streets. The year is 1888, and London's East End finds itself in the chilling grip of a murderous spree, the likes of which it had never seen before. The name on everyone's lips, whispered in hushed tones of fear and dread, is Jack the Ripper. Imagine the scene. Gas lamps cast a feeble glow on foggy streets, barely penetrating the darkness. Somewhere in the shadowy depths, a figure lurks, a predator in the night. His victims, women of the night, their lives cut short in the most gruesome of ways. One such woman was Martha Tabram, a woman of resilience and strength. Born on May 10, 1849, she faced the harsh realities of life amidst grimy streets and stolid edifices of Victorian London. Despite the constant battles against poverty and addiction, she was known for her unyielding, spirit-cheerful disposition. Yet, on a fateful night in August, her life was tragically cut short, her body bearing the horrifying signature of the Ripper's handiwork. For years, Martha's murder was thought to be an isolated incident. The Ripper's killing spree hadn't started yet, or so historians believed. Martha was simply a victim of the times, they thought. But recent scientific advancements suggest a far more sinister truth. Forensic analysis of the crime scene, conducted over a century later, has shed new light on Martha's tragic end. The nature of her wounds, the precision of the cuts, all point eerily towards the modus operandi of the infamous Ripper. Martha suffered 39 frenzied stab wounds, all directed at her throat and abdomen, eerily reminiscent of Jack the Ripper's signature method with his subsequent victims. Difference being, she sustained wounds from two distinct blades, one of them possibly resembling a pocket knife, while the other was notably larger, akin to the size of a bayonet or a dagger. It was undeniably this larger blade that delivered the fatal blow, conclusively ending Martha's life. The post-mortem examination revealed that this dagger-like weapon had been thrust into her abdomen. Could Martha Tabram have been an early victim of Jack the Ripper? Was she the beginning of a reign of terror that would haunt London for decades to come? With every new piece of evidence, the case grows stronger. Martha Tabram, once an overlooked casualty of a tumultuous era, may indeed serve as a precursor to the Ripper's subsequent victims. This chilling revelation not only adds to the mythos of Jack the Ripper, but also shines a light on Martha Tabram's life and tragic end. A woman who was more than just a victim, Martha was a symbol of the struggles faced by countless women in Victorian London, their stories often lost in the shadows of the city's dark past. Martha's story, once obscured by time, has been brought to light through the power of modern science. A chilling tale of a forgotten victim, a haunting echo from the depths of London's past, and a shocking addition to the legacy of Jack the Ripper. Born into a working-class family, Martha was a woman of the Victorian era. At 16, she, along with her four siblings, faced abandonment by their father. As a mother of two later in life, she encountered further challenges, including separation from her husband and a battle with alcohol addiction, a predicament in Victorian times that frequently led to extreme poverty for families and individuals alike. To sustain herself, she resorted to peddling trinkets on street corners and at times engaging in transactions of a more personal nature. Her nomadic existence involved shifting between lodging houses in search of nightly shelter. Despite the specter of adversity besetting her life, Martha was known for her cheerful and lively nature. These dire circumstances did not mangle her spirit. She remained a testament to resilience and cheerfulness in the face of hardships. Tragically, her life was abruptly and brutally cut short, casting a long and dark shadow over the history of London's East End. Hours before she was found dead, she took a client to George Yard Building, a housing complex that was described as housing for the people of poorest description. Her last client was a soldier who would have had a bayonet as part of his uniform. Later searches for this individual would lead to futility. Her story is a stark reminder of the grim realities faced by countless women of her time, a chilling echo that reverberates through the ages. The whispers of history persist, revealing tales that send shivers down the spine and conjure an era of darkness and trepidation. These stories, including Martha's, reverberate through the corridors of time, serving as poignant reminders of a not-so-distant past. Martha Tabram's story raises more questions than answers, prompting inquiries into the whereabouts of the soldier with a bayonet. 
and the mystery surrounding his later disappearance. Was the soldier perhaps an early manifestation of Jack the Ripper, beginning his macabre interests in targeting women of lesser repute? Alternatively, could Jack the Ripper have been a disgruntled neighbor residing in the George Yard buildings, driven to disgust by prostitutes leading men to his doorstep? The echoes of history leave us to ponder these chilling possibilities, unveiling a past that still holds secrets waiting to be unraveled in the end. The shocking truth about Martha Tabram's murder serves as a chilling reminder of the Ripper's reign of terror. It paints a grim picture of a time when the streets of London were anything but safe and the most vulnerable paid the highest price.